Greg, you had a full house there today. You could hear a pin drop at times. Um, you're unusual in the fact that you have the knowledge of breeding um, and you're obviously riding at the highest level. Um, do you think that gives you an edge? That's just def it's definitely a help, Sophie. Uh, the fact there is, I suppose, how I got so interested in it was, uh, I suppose I started a lot with the young horses and so I used to compete, still do compete in all the young horse classes so I took a keen interest in the pedigrees and uh, what horses were going well and mother lines and I suppose then I was lucky enough maybe to, to get some very good owners with me and uh, <coughs> started to, to get to keep some older horses and get to jump a Grand Prix level and then obviously we're going global so uh, that's I suppose how it all started and it definitely, it definitely is a help yeah. And uh, when we talk about MHS going global, it's a fairy tale really. And you've produced them here in Ireland all the way up. So it is possible to do. Uh, it is possible, definitely. Like he's jumped in Dublin, all the Irish horse sport classes. He's come through all the ranks they're provided in Ireland. And uh, I think he's he's just proof of it that we can do it. Uh, it's just, I suppose, if uh, the breeders can <clears throat> maybe try and get more involved with the riders and maybe do some more homework and we try and breed some better bred horses and try and breed some more going globals for the future. And we also have like top class shows here in Ireland, we've got the RDS, you've got Calvin Ministry, to name but a few. So it is worthwhile for buyers to come over here, there is horses and also we have top class jockeys. Yeah, we've great riders producing them and uh, I suppose from a commercial point of view uh, that we have, it's not just Irish horses we have in Ireland, mm. we have plenty of top horses that have come out of Ireland like uh, Sigali and uh, uh, horses like that that have gone on to win five star Grand Prix and Verdi, horses like that that are, have been produced in Ireland so we, d we have some of the best riders in the world producing horses here and uh, of course we have some very good young horses coming through um, but it would be nice to see some more better pedigrees coming along and I think we're certainly not lacking in the rider department and there's enough good shows and there's great money provided and prize money for the young horses. Uh, but like I said, if we could start to put some, breed some better pedigrees and more of them, then we have more of a chance of getting better horses. And um, you mentioned their owners earlier on, and of course you've been blessed with Caledonia Stables and of course holding on to MHS going global. First of all, um, what's the plan? They are going to keep them? Uh, well, like for now the plan is to hold on to him. Uh, he's a very good horse and he's worth a lot of money, so uh, for all the time I have with him, I, I couldn't appreciate it more from uh, the Krugers to keep the horse with me. They've been unbelievably, unbelievable supporters, and to have like a horse like that in your yard is... I mean, it changes everything, so I, I, I can't thank them enough. What makes it different for them? Why do you think, why would you become an owner, tell me? Sure, it's, I suppose it's lovely when you have such a good horse to see him grow and compete. Uh, Lee picked the horse out as a five-year-old. Uh, she saw him here two days after Dublin when he was just like a five-year-old and he was a raw talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both felt that he had ability to become a top mm -hmm. horse. And, and thankfully he put all the ingredients together and he's he has become one of the best horses in the world so I suppose not only from an owner point of view she picked the horse out as a young horse, saw him develop into a world class horse and she still gets to enjoy him and, and she gets to come to some of the best shows in the world and watch him so I hope that she, she enjoys that. And of course she's very involved all the way through. She's very involved uh, from like even the mayor you saw tonight, Madja, uh, she came back from Canada, she's uh, and she, it was Lee's idea to cover him with Presley Boy because, of course, they would have watched that horse jump in Spruce Meadows quite a lot. So she's uh, she's fairly up to date with all the pedigrees, and so she's she's an owner from Brood Mares and Falls right up to the Nations Cup level herself. So she's at the game a long time, and um, she's very very up to date and very very smart about it. And um, do you think it's fair to say that Ireland has the best horse producers in the world? It's definitely some of the best uh, producers in the world. Uh, what I'd say is that. If we can produce enough good horses for them to ride, we won't run out of jockeys anyway, that's for sure. And what's the key to breeding? Do you think the key is to connect the breeders with the, with the riders and to go to the shows and see what the horses need to do? Yeah, it's definitely a big help. And uh, when you see what the top horses are, are asked to do now, it's huge. But even nights like this organised by Chagas, uh, some of the uh, things organised by the horse board, if people can get out and meet people and chat, you'll always learn something new. 
Uh, every time you you know you go and try and learn something, you're going to bring it back home and try and improve things. But I just think that the the important thing is that if we can just try and get into better pedigrees, you know, like there is it is a very uh, strong market there for good horses, and if the breeders can, and it is filtering down the line, you know, people are people before they wanted to buy eight and nine year olds to go straight into top level can't buy them anymore, so they're buying starting to buy six and seven year olds. So the people that are getting good money for six and seven year olds are going back to buy. Younger horses, foals, yearlings, two-year-olds, three-year-olds. So it's starting the money is starting to filter down through the market, and I think that showed in the elite sales this year. Like there was great money for foals, mm -hmm. and but it's only people say that's only the my new my uh, the minority of the well-bred ones. But I mean, uh, <coughs> I was actually helped to pick some of the foals for the Irish Breeders Classic, mm -hmm. and it's still uh, hard to find very good pedigrees. And uh, like I said, uh, the market was there. There was a lot of customers there for good falls. So if people can actually try and get stuck in, find nice fillies, whether they be young fillies from good families or mares that maybe have some proven records, and try and breed them to good stallions. And I think, you know, you'd be surprised at the money in the market is there, and it's only getting better. There's more people getting involved in the sport in the high end, and like I said, that's going to filter down. And you mentioned there the Irish Breeders Classic. Um, there is a lot of young horse classes in Ireland. I know people have mentioned there earlier on that maybe horses could be overproduced or it's too much for, for the youngsters to do but the fact is you don't have to do everything and those classes are a chance to showcase the young horses that you have. It is a chance to showcase them and uh, I've been lucky enough now to win the Breeders Classic uh, twice there and it's four, four years since it started uh, but uh, overproduction is something we need to be careful of because uh, you know we're probably overly lucky there's so many classes for young horses now and there's good prize money on offer so maybe the thing is sometimes the mileage is not the problem uh, the problem is maybe when there's money on offer people go on the ring trying to jump clear rounds and they're trying to engineer something uh, to help the horse too much rather than letting the horse educate himself and if they have a fence down it's not the end of the world you know when there's prize money on offer we all want to jump a clear round and get a piece of it uh, so that's the only thing I'd say to be careful of is that uh, you know it's no it's definitely no harm to go after a couple of these prize pots every now and again but maybe not every week trying to go and jump clear rounds is not the way forward the horses have to go on the ring and learn and uh, you know if you're in there trying to help them every step of the way and lift them off the ground and uh, keep them off fences to help them it's probably not the ideal situation but like I said just uh, if you just manage it right uh, it's still not it's still great to be there in the big days like the Breeders Classic the final in Dublin and there's several other good classes along the way. And with the Irish Breeders Classic there was um, a public auction for elite sales and there's also um, the supreme sale of show jumpers coming up in Gores Bridge. So there is an outlet now for people to come and look for show jumpers if they don't necessarily know the private guys who have the horses. Yeah, but I think the, the world is small now. If there's a good horse anywhere in the world now, it's, it doesn't be long before they get rooted out. So to think that we're a little island out on our own and that nobody knows what horses are here is not correct. If there's a good horse in Ireland, uh, I can be, you can be sure people will find out about it fairly quick with the use of videos so easy to send around anywhere now. You have YouTube and WhatsApp and Facebook, all these places. If there's a good video up, I can guarantee you there's five customers on the phone straight away to buy the horse off you. But the thing is, uh, it just needs to be the right types of horses. And that, that needs to be started from the ground up. So that's where the breeders need to realise that, you know, stop trying to just uh, take the easy way out and maybe use the simple stallion or a mare that's there because they couldn't be sold. You know, you need to get a nice quality filly with a good pedigree and use a good sire. And okay, it might cost a few quid to start with, but I can guarantee it will come back in abundance if they try and do it the right way. So it's true to say a good horse will sell itself? good horse will definitely sell itself. It's a problem trying to keep good horses now, it's not a problem trying to sell them. Brilliant Greg, um, thanks a million for chatting to us and uh, best of luck for the rest of this season and of course the big one next year. Thanks a million Sophie.